family of faith and to share fellowship one with another. There is nothing like belonging to a family of faith and to know that you have uh, a God who watches over us as a family. Uh, I want to welcome you to today's midweek service, uh, the Vantage of of Purpose Driven Church International. Uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11, and I will read from verse 1. The Bible says, now faith is the substance of the things we owe for, the evidence of things not seen. Uh, Faith is a very powerful uh, force for believers' experience uh, and to see the fullness of the power of God manifesting in our lives. It is by faith that we please God. It is by faith that we can convert the invisible to the visible. The, 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 the invincible power of God can only be bring through manifestation on earth when we engage by faith. So the question today is, what is faith? And because we are looking at the subject of faith today, what is faith? Hebrews 11.1 1 tells us that faith is the substance of the things that we hope for. The substance of the things we hope for. So for example, you have money in your hand, or you have a check written in your name. And then you have the check in your hand. A check of a million naira. Now, you don't have cash, but you have the check. And you know that there is money in the account of the person who has given you the check. Based on that simple understanding, that check are instrument of conversion. It changes the narrative for you. Do you know that if you have a check of 5 million naira in your hand right now, even though you have not gone to the bank to go and cash the money, you can go and price the car of maybe 2 million naira, or maybe 2.5, or maybe 3 million naira, depending on your greed level. That will now determine the kind of car you want to go. You may end up using the old 5 million naira to want to buy a car. Okay? But the, the, the point we are trying to get out of it is that the fact that you have a check in your hand gives you some level of confidence. So faith is a booster. It boosts our confidence based on the truth that we have. Now, here is where many people make a shipwreck of their lives, not so much about faith in God, uh, is that people don't have faith so they try to fake things. How do I mean? For example, we all believe that God exists. And God has power to turn things around. And they can change our lives. That beliefs make people to say there is nothing God cannot do. Now, but to say that, do you believe that there is nothing God cannot do? It's not difficult for people to answer. I know you can answer me right now and say, yeah, I believe that there is nothing God cannot do. But if I take it a step further and say, do you believe that by tomorrow morning, God can give you a million naira? Then people say, yes, I believe, but see that but is the doubt. That but is where the issue is. That but is coming out of the fact that somebody has not seen it either written in the word or God expressly giving them an assurance that tomorrow they are going to have that money. And for you to have that faith, then there are a few things that you need to learn and understand and do. So you say, now faith is the substance. In other words, in the realm of the spirit, we are substance of the things we are hoping for. What are you hoping for? Now, let's look at, uh, because you need to understand the difference between 
uh, the hope that the Bible talks, is talking about here, when it talks about this hope, it, it's not just talking about, you know, any kind of hope. Because I can believe that tomorrow, my, my tomorrow will be all right. I believe. In other words, I have that hope that my tomorrow will be all right. But that does not mean that my tomorrow will be all right. A lot of people say things like that, and things are going bad for them day by day. Why? Because uh, they hope that tomorrow uh, everything will be all right. Okay, so let's look at the book of Romans. Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. We want to look at the life of Abraham. Uh, let's look at it from... Verse 13, Romans 4, from verse 13. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham, not to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be his, then faith is made void, and the promise is made on all the effect, because the law worketh wrath, for where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith that he might be by grace. To the end that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to them that will. <coughs> not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us. Now, here we see the story of Abraham being spoken about. What is he talking about? He's saying that God gave promise to Abraham. So, the same way, God today want to give us promise. Why is this so important to know when it comes to the subject of faith? Now, you can't be using your faith for what has not been given to you as a promise. Faith comes because there is a promise. Are you getting me now? So if I tell you that uh, tomorrow morning, I want to give you, uh, I'm going to give you one of my shoes or I'm going to give you one of my jackets, or I promise you my wristwatch tomorrow. Now, that promise ignites faith in you, you know, because once you have that hope, faith comes alive, that tomorrow. So it becomes a hope to you. It becomes a substance. Now, the faith is, do you trust me? Do you believe I will do? By my antecedent, can you trust that I will give you? So if you have seen me, that I give things to people and you can see it. If I give you that promise, what happens is that you also can believe that by tomorrow you're going to have your own. Why? Because you, can, you have seen the antecedent of my life. You have seen me giving it to people. So the question is, have you seen God give things to people? And have you listened to their, prom their, their, their testimony? Yes. If you have heard it and then you see the promise of God to them, then you hear some people say, I searched the scripture and I saw where it is written, I am healed. Then I believe I'm healed. I, I was healed and then I experienced the healing of God. In other words, they found the promise of God for them. They stay on that promise. And what happened is that because you don't need to believe God for faith. Faith comes because you believe. In fact, the reason you have faith is because you're a believer. Being a believer is faith. You can't come out of faith, you are in faith. The Bible says we all having the same spirit of faith as it is written. We believe, therefore we speak. We also believe and therefore speak. In other words, once you see the promise of God, faith is activated because of the promise that you have seen. So we see here that Abraham's faith was premised on the promise of God to him. Hallelujah. Abraham's faith was premised on the promise of God to him. Now let's look at something. Uh, look at it. The Bible says that Abraham believed God. It was created to him for righteousness. Now look at it from verse 18. The Bible says, Who against hope believed in hope? Now he looked like, you know, contradiction. The Bible says, against hope. He 
word hope here is helpless. Okay, against hope. And hope is now is belief. Whom against hope believed in hope. What is he saying? So, he said, when we look at the life of Abraham, naturally, naturally, at his age, his wife, having ceased from sin, a period, has passed the age of menopause, at 90 years old, all natural hope was lost. So, against the hope in natural event of how life is supposed to run, in hope of the promise of God, Abraham believed. Then it was accounted to him for righteousness. The Bible says, as a result of that, he became the father of many nations. You know, against hope, you know, he believed that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he did not consider his own body dead. That's when you have the hope of the promise of God, you no longer consider things in the natural. That was exactly what happened to Abraham. So, let me give you another illustration. For example, how much fight will you put out if you have a check written in your name and you know there is money in the account where you want to draw the money from and the banking officials are treating you anyhow no matter the attitude, you, will not going to, you are not going to leave the bank. You may grumble inside of you. In other words, you can get the, re the result of God even when doubt is playing in your head. Because faith is of the heart. Doubt can be in your head, but you can lay hold on the promise of God. How do you do that? You must find the promise of God for you. Listen, don't just say that I know I'm going to come out of this institution with flying color. Get to see what God says about people coming out with life in flying colors. The promise of God around that. When you know, no matter what is going on in your academics today, you can stand on that promise and still end up at what the word says. That's how to change the course of events. Against hope. Of having low GP. In hope of 2-1, you believe. In hope of first class, you believe. That's how things work. I believe that you can change the course and the narrative of your life looking at the promise of God because that is what wake up the faith that is on the inside of you. Never settle for less because you have the faith that overcome the world. Now, Let's look at something the Bible says about, you know, your faith being an overcoming faith. Look at it. First John chapter 5 from verse 4. For who, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. This is the victory that will give you the first class, even your faith. This is the victory that will bring health and vitality to you, even our faith. Verse 5. Who is it that overcometh the world? For he that believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Are you a believer? Yes, you are an overcomer. Now, all you have to do now is to search the promise of God for you concerning different areas of life and then stand on that promise and then begin to make a declaration of them. No matter, you don't have to look at the circumstances of your life to determine whether the word is working for you or not. Against hope, in hope, you must what? Believe. I pray that the Lord will expand his word in your heart and your life will not remain the same again. Father, we ask that you bless our heart by the power of your spirit that we may be ex established in the truth of your word. That by your eternal spirit we may be taught even in our private interpretation and, 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 and fellowship with the word of God. The things that make up for our faith, our hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let everyone hearing me today experience a total turnaround and transformation by the power of your word. That our heart 
may be established in truth that we may run the race of our lives without wavering in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. All right, next week, we're going to be meeting. I'm going to be having a great time. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. By the time we meet next week, you have testimonies of Jesus confirmed in your life. In Jesus' name.